Houdini is a program that you will never stop learning, which is why I wanted to cover 10 hotkeys that you may not have known about inside Houdini. So to start things off right here with number one, if I want to add a node to our tree here, if I want to do transform, before I hit enter, if I hold shift and press enter, it's going to set our display flag and wire it up to the node that we just created. Super big time saver, that way you don't have to wire everything up manually. It does uh, still not wanna put things in between the wires. Uh, if you were to do the wire, select the wire, and then hit the transform and shift enter, it does work that way, but you will need to select the wire instead of the node. But a, a super big time saver, if uh, you're doing any sort of work in Houdini, that's something you're probably gonna be doing quite a lot. So jumping to number two here, if I go down to this attribute wrangle, and I just set a, an expression in here, so I'll do at CD equals, let's just set it to 0.1. So this is just gonna change the color to a 0.1 value. So if I hit enter here, you see that nothing happens. In order for it to execute, you have to click outside of the attribute wrangle, and that's, uh, let's just try that again with the attribute wrangle actually with the display flag, so at CD is equal to 0.1. If I hit enter, see nothing happens. So now that I click out, it's going to execute and you can see that our cube has changed colors. So let's say we wanted to have this execute without having to click out something that is super annoying to have to do. If I hold control and press enter, you can see that it now executes the code instead of just going down to the next line something you're gonna be doing a lot if you're working inside of VEX. So building upon that on number three, if I wanna pop out any one of these VEX windows, which actually any value that you can change, uh, which you can type in is basically one of these little VEX codes. So you can see we got a bunch in here. Every single one of these, if I hold Alt and press E, you can see I can pop it out into a bigger window that I can then type into and do whatever we want. I'm just going to close that. Same with the attribute wrangle. If I hold Alt and press E, you see it's going to pop, uh, pop that out and allow you to get a better look at what you're coding. So moving on to number four, let's say I have all my nodes just kind of moved off and not aligned at all. They're not lined up. If I want to line them up, if I have the node selected, I hold A and then click and drag you can see that it's going to line up all the nodes below that. If I were to drag to the left, everything above is gonna to go to the left. If I drag to the right, you can see that everything lines up to the right, and I can just line those back up using the A key, which is super, super useful. Another tip, if you have everything kind of all off and weird, if you wanna just have them all line up, you can press the L key, and it's going to automatically just line those up. If you have a bunch of, of nodes in here, I uh, may do some weird stuff, you may have to adjust a little bit, but for the most part, it does a pretty good job. Moving on to number five, if I just go ahead and select, set the uh, display flag on the transform, and then I input an expression here, just do $FF, you're gonna see that the translate value has now been set to whatever our frame number is which is uh, just a basic expression inside Houdini. But let's say we wanted to change that. We wanted to get rid of this. We no longer wanted that expression in there. You can either right click and delete the channels or you can hold control shift and left click and it's going to delete that expression out of there and set it to whatever value that it had in there. Building upon that for number six, if we wanna reset this back to default, we can hold uh, control and middle mouse, and it will delete uh, the value and set it back to whatever the default value was. So this works for individual channels as well. So if I wanted to reset it back here and the Y value, you can see I can hold control and select and it's going to change it back to the default value. If I wanted to reset the whole thing, I can hold control and click on the name of the parameter and it's going to reset all of the values back to their default settings. So moving on to number seven, if we want to make a copy of this node, let's just say 
we had a bunch of settings in here that we liked. Our scale, we wanted to keep that scale, but we wanted to change some other values. We wanna make a copy of this node. We can just hold Alt and left click and drag, and it'll make a copy of that node. You can see now that we change that they are different, uh, but it is just an exact copy of whatever you had. But what if we wanted to make an exact copy of this node and have it referenced? That brings us to tip number eight. We can just control, shift, alt, left click and drag, and it's gonna make a complete reference back to this node. So as I change this uniform scale here, you're gonna see that our node updates accordingly because it is completely referencing this node. You can see every single one of these values is a reference to this node. If we wanted to get rid of some of these, we can just control shift and left click and we can localize these values if we wanted to. So you can see, change that and it's now localized to that node. So moving on to number nine, if we wanted to move our nodes around again, um, not so much as rearranging them or like uh, organizing them, but if we wanted to just move them anything downstream or upstream, we can use the control and shift keys to move them accordingly. So control and it will move everything downstream. And then if I hold shift, it's going to move everything upstream. So super useful if you have a super large node tree. Let's say I wanna move this whole node tree over. I can hold shift and you can see that I'm moving everything over, even though some of these nodes I can't actually see. Very, very useful once your node trees get a little bit complex. And finally, bringing us to the last tip here, if I just set our display flag to this color and see if we go and select this color, it's going to set it to whatever color we want. But what if we want to select a color from our monitor? So normally you can just uh, click the little eyedropper and drag around and it'll set to whatever you have selected or whatever you select. But if I bring a image over here, you can see as I, oops, I'm gonna need to set the window mode to be always on top here. So as I drag over, you can see as soon as I go off screen in Houdini, it's going to no longer be selecting these values. And if I select it, I'm clicking, it's not gonna do anything. But if I wanted to, I can just select that mouse dropper again and hold the middle mouse key and you can see that now we have our selection picking up every color that we have off screen and Houdini. I can select whatever color that I want. You just have to make sure you have the eyedropper selected and then hit your middle mouse button and it will allow you to pick colors off screen. So if you wanted to pick a color that is, let's say, in an image or something like that, um, you, can, you can do that without having uh, any sort of issues with uh, finding the, the color in a different program or something like that. So anyways, hopefully you guys learned something from all of these hotkeys. Uh, some of them are pretty obscure and aren't uh, easily found anywhere. So hopefully, like I said, you learned something. Uh, please, if you have any other hotkeys that you may know about uh, that aren't super common inside of Houdini, feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comment section about those. Um, awesome to, to learn some new stuff that can save you some time. But anyways, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel. If you want to learn more about Houdini, um, Redshift, I do have some stuff on Clarice and Cinema 4D as well. If any of those interest you, make sure you guys check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.